One Network has the resource and commitment to keep you fully informed. Join award-winning political editor Linda Clark as she leads a team of experienced journalists in round-the-clock campaign coverage. The issues you want explained, the questions you want answered. One Network News will reflect the mood of the nation as Election Day draws near. Make an informed Decision 99 with New Zealand's leading news service, One Network News. Good evening, New Zealand. Leading tonight's news, the country's account books are open for scrutiny. Treasury says economic prospects are good. Prospects for the unemployed aren't so good, with just a slight drop predicted next year. And Hitler's Alpine retreat is reopened as a warning of the horrors of fascist rule. Our top story, the government opened its account books today, an exercise required by law before an election. Treasury says the outlook is good. It's forecasting an expanding economy and rising government surpluses. But getting New Zealanders into jobs is still a problem. Business reporter Mike Jaspers explains. Not surprisingly, the Treasurer reckons the books tell a good story. What this opening of the books shows is the economy will continue to grow, prices will remain stable, jobs will keep coming. The economy's been struggling with drought and Asia's recession. Now Treasury's expecting better years, the economy steadily expanding to around 3% growth within four years, growth not seen since 1996. We think it's very believable. Uh, the forecasts are pretty much in, in line with ours. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, significant revisions up in, in, the world, in the world growth outlook. That'll help exporters, manufacturers tip to enjoy double-digit growth. It'll put money in the government's kitty, surpluses rising to over $2 billion. Not much immediately for spending promises, but enough, says Labour. There's certainly more than enough to meet the seven key pledges that we've announced. But we're still spending too much. Our overdrafts forecast to worsen, and there could be other problems. It is a pretty optimistic outlook, but I guess you'd have to say that it's not without risks, particularly uh, uh, around the US and, and the share market there, and also prospects of, of possibly another drought in, in New Zealand. Rising interest rates also a risk. The Reserve Bank expected to push them up further shortly to head off inflation. The worry is that that growth which is beginning to appear is going to be cut off very quickly. And the books are small comfort for sacked bend on workers. Despite forecast growth, unemployment still sticks around 6%. That's more than 100,000 out of work. Can we take another 1% off that? Well, with strong business confidence, uh, with growth that, that's better than what's forecast, yes, I hope we can do better. After nine years of national, opposition parties maintain they can do better. Mike Jaspers, One Network News. Getting unemployment below the 6% figure is not going to be easy. More job losses were announced today, with the DB Group warning up to 200 jobs could go in the restructuring of its business. Just yesterday, Bendon announced it was closing its New Zealand plants, putting up to 400 people out of work. The government maintains it's creating jobs, but other parties say it's not creating enough. Political editor Linda Clark has more. Something to celebrate, a young business opening its new factory, employing 15 people and dreaming of hiring more. Our sales are growing rapidly. Uh, we have a huge expansion in place and new technology coming on board. In stark contrast, bend on workers. Their jobs will go by Christmas. Whether they'll find new jobs is a moot point. Treasury predicts only a slight drop in unemployment in the next three years. Even next year, when Treasury says the economy will be at full capacity, there'll be 6% or 100,000 New Zealanders unemployed. We pay unemployment benefits, we close down factories, we have more unemployed people, and we import uh, goods from overseas that we used to make here so that they get the jobs and we don't. Now, that's supposed to be good for New Zealand. The government says it created 16,000 new jobs in the first half of this year. It'll create 115,000 more in the next three years. On the flip side, an Employers' Federation report released by Labor shows 53 factories have closed in the last 18 months. Nearly 5,000 workers have lost their jobs. Among them, timber workers at Carter Holt, meat workers at AFCO, car assemblers at Mitsubishi. New Zealand is about to become a branch economy of Australia, a sort of a warehouse economy, one where we've got a great service sector but nothing else, a sort of a, a, sort of a sheep farming and bungee jumping economy. Higher taxes, less flexible labour markets and higher business costs 
are not going to help one single one of those 6%, currently 7%, into the workforce. All parties agree encouraging more investment is the answer, though ACT wants one thing. If you lower the tax rate by 1%, you create 40,000 real jobs in five years. That New Zealand, unlike Ireland, unlike Finland, unlike Singapore, actually unlike any other Western nation, America included, does not have government involvement in economic development. We just don't do it. In nine years, National has never got unemployment below 6%. And whoever's government next, politicians agree, getting that hardcore back to work will be tough. Linda Clark, One Network News. A Christchurch coroner has issued a warning over the use of Viagra, a drug to help impotent men. His comments follow an inquest into the death of a 54-year-old father of seven shortly after lovemaking. The man had been prescribed Viagra by his doctor and had been taking it for more than a month before suffering a fatal heart attack. The deputy coroner is not directly blaming Viagra for his death, but he hopes it will emphasise the risks associated with taking the drug. People are now obtaining it, uh, perhaps via the internet, uh, or by mail order from overseas, without prescription. And that raises concerns because uh, there may be fatalities to follow if people start using the drug without medical advice. Colin Marshall says only a doctor can assess if someone's fit enough to use Viagra and ensure it doesn't clash with existing medications. Auckland police are hunting for an escaped prisoner who they say should not be approached. 31-year-old Peter Anaru Matehairi is serving eight years for aggravated robbery at Auckland's Paremoremo prison. Police say he was working under supervision at the prison's compost bagging enterprise when he ran away. Fire insurance premiums will go up by nearly $20 next February. The Fire Commission's announced an increase in the fire service levy. The levy is the only source of funding for our professional firefighters. Just last year, the Commission, under Roger Estill, reduced the levy after posting a $67 million surplus. But the new Commission says that's all been spent. The National Party's idea of electioneering mirth appears to have backfired. It ridicules other political parties on the internet, but never makes it clear that the website has been set up by National. That's against the law, and the Alliance wants the matter formally investigated. Here's political reporter Duncan Garner. This is the website www.nocrap, set up by National to capture the youth vote, but nowhere on it does the party claim ownership of the site. It's filthy. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. It's really not saying where it comes from and it's misleading the public. The site uses Jenny Shipley's son, Ben, to woo the youth vote. It makes fun of every other political party besides National. Click on Labour and you're in Disneyland. This is about as bad as it can get. Choose Alliance, you get a poem about how many of its MPs have left the party. It's certainly not ethical, and there is a question about whether it's even legal. Pick New Zealand first, and there's a series of jokes about its compulsory military training scheme. It's appropriately named uh, Crap Site, and uh, it's the kind of uh, low-down, dirty politics that you'd expect from a party without any ideas and without any substance. Yet Nationals defending the site. It seems that some people in the Alliance and the Labour bloc are taking it more seriously than they need to. The Electoral Office is now being asked to investigate whether National has broken the law by not revealing it set up the website. Now National appears to be backing down. If it's required to be on there, we'll put it on. There's no ifs, no buts, we'll put it on. And just a word of warning, shorten the same website address and you get a pornographic website. Of course, we can't show you any more. Yet most political parties are taking this seriously. National says it's just fun and games, yet the opposition say it's desperate, dirty tricks. Duncan Garner, One Network News. Just ahead, the horrors of the Third Reich are displayed in a former Nazi retreat and a bumpy ordeal for two passengers on a city jet flight. On Telstra Business tomorrow, market reaction to today's pre-election fiscal update from Treasury and the changing face of bank branches. Join us at 6.30 tomorrow morning on TV1 for Telstra Business, your business advantage. Then on breakfast from 7 o'clock, Dave Dobbin joins us. And we're going to check out the rugby, both the NPC and the World Cup. We'll see you for breakfast tomorrow.